Speaking of reinvention, um, you know, it, it, it was on its way for you, uh, mm -hmm. but you really have reinvented yourself, right? Yeah. At one, at one point in your career, people knew you as ESQ, Esquire, yep. attorney. Uh, that, that is James McMillan. Go to him if you need a contract done. Yep. But there are a lot of people today, you're just a plain and simple record exec, businessman, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, mogul, somebody who people are desperately trying to get on your radar because if I can get J um, James McMillan to, to listen to my music mm -hmm. and, 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 and to take me under his wing, my career is going to blow. So first, I want to congratulate you on all that you're doing with Art at War. Thank you, sir. Appreciate all that you, you're doing. But for anybody who doesn't know, Art at War has, you know, you you are the, the, the parent company to um, the, the whole YBN crew, not me. All the YBN kids, yeah. Almighty J, Corday, <laughs> um, well, Juicy Fruit, I'm just to name a few. Yeah. How how does that come about? Yep. Because you're now a bona fide record man, first and foremost, right? And 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 I see well, the that, that was intentional too. Absolutely. Go ahead. I see the transition so Yeah, that was intentional too, man. Because I remember, you know, you you managing eight ball MJG to take it back a little <laughs> bit. But let, yeah. let's talk about intention for a second. Right. You said this part of your life was intentional. Tell me about it. So this part, the, 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 the management of, um, I, I stepped into management and, um, and then production, and it was intentional in the sense of, part of, well, the first part wasn't intentional, right? It just happened in the sense that I, um, I got a phone call one night to, uh, um, no, I got a phone call actually during the daytime from a young lady who I had been nice to uh, she worked at a law firm and she was um, the law clerk. She was like the secretary. Right. And she called me and she was like, hey, I've got these guys that uh, the, the partners in my office um, haven't been paying that much attention to. And I really like them. And I feel like they're deserving of more attention. And um, she was like, I think they should they need a new lawyer. Would you be interested in meeting with them? And I was like, OK, well, who is it? And she was like, um, it's a ball and MJG. Now, mind you, I was in New York at the time and Southern hip hop wasn't, uh, was becoming more, uh, more dominant, but it wasn't dominant at the time, right? And so I was like, but I went to law school in Houston. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio originally. So all of those sounds, I was completely familiar with A-Ball and MJG, right? They were legends in my book. So I was like, absolutely, I'll meet with them. So um, I'll never forget this, the night before I was supposed to go meet with them, um, I got a phone call from my ex-girlfriend's friend. And she was like, I'm in New York. Um, it was like one o'clock in the morning. She was like, I'm in New York. And my boyfriend um, locked me out the room. I don't know where he's at. He's, he's, um, I, but they won't let me in the room because my name's not on the room. She was like, you know, can I come by your place and crash? I don't know what time he's coming by. And I was like, all right, okay. So I got up and I was like, I, I'll come get you, right? So because she didn't know where she was at. And I lived in Jersey at the time. So I was on my way out the door and then she called me back. She was like, oh, no problem. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I woke you up. He just showed up. Um, hopefully I get a chance to see you while you're here. I was like, while I'm in town, I was like, all right, cool. Went back to bed. Next day I go to the hotel to go meet A-Ball and MJG. When I get there, I'm standing in the lobby um, waiting for them to show up. And the girl pops up and she's like, oh, what you doing here? She was, I was like, oh, I was like, I, I came to meet these guys. She was like, who? I was like, I came to meet these guys, A-Ball and MJG. She was like, oh, that's crazy. She was like, my boy, my boyfriend is their producer. She was like, I was like, oh, word. And she was like, yeah, because I was supposed to be interviewing with them. And she was like, come with me. So I walked upstairs and she walked me in the room. She was like, this is, your, this is, this is my boy. This is your lawyer. He's going to be representing y'all. He's the best, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't have to say nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's how I started representing them. And, and so... And we built a relationship and next thing I know, uh, they were like, you know, they, they, they need me to manage them. And, and they were like, yo, can you manage us? And I was like, okay, cool. So I started managing them. Um, I had a relationship with Puff. Um, it was like, look, I got them out of the deal with Tony Draper. And I was like, yo, listen, I got these guys. Um, and he was like, yo, who? And I was like, hey, Ball and he was like, yo, bring them to the office. So, so we, we did that deal. 
And then we just kept going and, um, and we sold some records and that was my introduction to management, right? And so I learned a lot, way more about the music business than I learned just sitting behind a desk doing paperwork. Because at this point it was, it, it became, I saw how it all blended together. Like the, the, the deal points I was arguing about and all this different stuff. Now I saw the practical side of it and why some of the things I was arguing about didn't even make sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so it just made my approach different. And I, you know, I encourage anybody, um, if you're a young lawyer and you have the opportunity, you know, if, if you have the, and you have the, the patience for it, right? If you really want to learn the business, then you should take a chance and possibly manage an act because you will learn so much more in doing that. And, um, and that's, that was my path. And I learned that. And then I realized that um, in large part, you need to own some rights, right? In order to really have a real say so or really to make, you know, to really wheel and deal like you want to. So at the time I was managing rights, but I didn't own the rights. So I switched over to production, looking for an act to sign. And, um, and I, um, you know, some producers referred me um, Machine Gun Kelly. And I ended up doing a deal with him and partnering with him on a company. We built out a company called EST19XX, um, partnered with Puff and Jimmy Iovine, sold a, t a, a ton of records, um, turned him into a worldwide superstar. And, um, and, uh, and then in 2017, I decided to start my own company and um, it called Art at War and was looking for a first act, not my first act to sign. And the first act that kind of came on my radar was TK. And then in, the, in my pursuit of, of trying to sign TK, uh, James Prince was, um, was gracious enough to help me try to get him out of a, a terrible situation that he was in. And um, in the course of us doing that, one of Jay's guys called me, my man Guns called me and was like, hey, um, I, I know you're trying to get TK out of jail, um, but there's this other kid named YBN Namir from my hometown that is, you know, doing this, you know, doing the same kind of numbers and he's got the same demographic and you really should take a look at it. And, I, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in listening to everything, right? Because you never know where it's going to come from. You know, my grandmother could call me and be like, you know what? I got this boy who plays the piano in the church. You need to listen to him. I will listen because I'm not, you know, you never know where it's going to come from, right? So at the end of the day, I took a look at it. I was like, oh, snap. This is the same, same like demographics that Tim, that TK was, was, was set, has set on fire. This guy, Wabi and Namir is set on fire. And I, and I, I got in contact with him and his mom. And I think some other people have been trying to sign him before that, but um, they didn't talk to his mom. He was still a minor. So I talked to his mom and, and she was like, you the first person that's called me. And, it, you know, and, and that was, you know, that was my approach. And I knew that from being a lawyer that you got to get the contract affirmed if he's a kid, right? So um, got with them, um, ended up signing him and, um, and then went to Craig and Julie. And, um, and I, I to told them that I, I was like, listen, I'm a lawyer, but I'm tired of being a lawyer. I was just honest. I was like, you know, this is, it's a, it's, it's, to some degree it's cool, but I, want, I really have found a new passion and I really want to do what you guys are doing. And I think that I could do it well with you. And Julie, I'll never forget. She was like, okay, okay, James. And then her and Craig, and they were like, all right, you know, and, and they took a chance. And I, and I thank them for, to this day for giving me that opportunity. And I did a deal with them, a joint venture with them and, um, and just kept going and kept signing acts and we kept selling records and, you know, I applied the experience that I had with MGK and with A Ball and MJG and all the other people that I represented over the years, and and um, just kept going. And we sold a, a bunch of records since then. So it's been a, it's been a great experience. It's been a, a really blessed experience too. Okay, you just mentioned Julian Craig. Obviously, yep. I know those names. For anybody watching, can you explain who Julie and Craig are? Okay, Julie Greenwald is, is uh, arguably the most powerful woman in the music business. And she's the chairman, uh, chairwoman of, um, of uh, Atlantic Records. And uh, Craig Coleman is a, is a co-chair of Atlantic Records as well. And, um, and I've known them for, for years as a lawyer, um, but I've, you know, I've done great business with them and, and during the course of doing business, we've built a relationship with them. And, and, um, and uh, 
So yeah, that's who they are. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.